Um, well, I guess let's talk about what I do. Um, like, I guess everybody kind of knows that I make all these big crochet hats. Um, it's something that I've kind of just done over time and developed while being in Melbourne. Because um, I'm from Perth and I moved around a year ago. Um, but at some point um, last year, like, me and my friend Tash realised that, like, we, well, at least I had to, because she started going to uni, that I had to find a way of, like, making friends and stuff. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, like, because, like, moving from one city to another, other than having family, it's kind of hard to just, like, make friends with just randoms off the street or whatever. So, um, uh, I tried to do my last unit, um, like, at uni, and it just didn't work out. So, I had to go and, um, find another way to kind of, like, meet like-minded people and all those sorts of things. So, that's why I started my Instagram. And I essentially, like, the way I approach my artistic practice is, um, I, I always say catalyst, but I don't know if that's the right word, but, um, I make these crochet hats and put them on Instagram, and I kind of know, um, I kind of developed making these over time, like, I think my sister and my aunt and Tash and stuff know that, like, um, they see me make ugly things, and then they've become food hats and stuff over, t- over time, but, like, I knew that they had some sort of, like, viral quality to them that made it easy for people to go like, on my Instagram and, like, have one be friends with me or, like, get to know me, you know, like, like, there's no point, like, with social media and stuff like that, um, it's kind of easy to just make friends and meet new people, um, through like-minded things, and if you follow them on things, um, you see what they like and you can see what you do and what you like, so, um, so yeah, so, essentially, my practice is I just make these hats to make friends with people, um, like, and it's been really good because, like, you guys are here, and, like, all these people are here, and, like, I would never, like, um, ever, like, I would never have done any of these art things otherwise, and, like, and especially since last December, like, when I was in Frankie, and ever since then, when I went viral, and then, like, I'm, like, the last few months, I just met all these amazing people, and all these sorts of things, it's just kind of been a really worthwhile thing to kind of have done since I've been here, and I would never have done it if I had not been in Melbourne. Um, but, yeah, so, I don't really know where what else to elaborate on, because I don't know what you want to know, so I think I'd rather just have questions, is that right? Put a yeah. hat on. Sorry. Put a hat on. Put one on. <laughs> um, okay. I'll put you can't smile if you wear it. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> The thing is, it's like, everybody points out my face, and my face looks like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... What um, oh, I always have varying favourites. It really depends. Like, some of them, like... <laughs> some of them I like um, for the like sentimental value, and sometimes I like some of them because like I just liked they were like fully realised idea. Like my first ever pizza one and stuff like that. Like that was a fully realised idea. Like I had in my mind like oh, I'm gonna make a pizza and my face is gonna be like sticking out. <laughs> the photo is gonna be at this angle and all that sort of stuff. And so that was like why like some things like that. And then like but then also in other ways like that my first pizza hat that I made, that was what kind of triggered, like, after I did that, and then, like, I got contacted by, like, Huffington Post and BuzzFeed and stuff like that, and so that's why that would have more sentimental value over one that I just, like, made, like, did I put, like, a broccoli one up, like, I don't know if that would, if I would ever, like, feel any specialness from it, but I made, I made it, I made it t- last night today, and, like, and, like, the burger one, because that literally, one, because that literally was, like, my first food one, and my first, like, that took forever, but also because, um, that has, like, um, that's attached to, like, where I work, like, I work in Touch Up Peg Way in Caulfield, and, like, um, I wouldn't have made it uh, unless I worked there, you know, um, but... Do you work so much? Uh, really, kind of recently I've ever thought of wearing them out. <laughs> um, it... Uh, a few weeks ago, I brought it in my bag, and other people wore them, <laughs> and stuff like that, like, um, did I wear something the other day? I can't remember, but the thing is, it's like, with them, if I ever wore them, like, wait, like, something I was talking about with, um, I, like, did this random interview the other day, and she was like, oh, who are your, like, um, people you look up to, or whatever, or, like, um, 
people who influence what you do, and I was like, well, I don't know, but, um, but like, <laughs> but like, but, but like, um, where I kind of like get the two sides of like making these wearable things and like these giant like food things, like, it's like, yeah, like the TV show called Adventure Time, and so I just can't do it. Yeah, so like, so like, um, I made, so I'm making the full head hats because the main character Finn has this full, like, bear hat thing. And um, so that's where these all develop from. And so, and then, so, um, and all the characters in there are like lollies and stuff. And like, so I go, that's like one end of the spectrum. And then, like, the other the thing is like, there's like a TV show called RuPaul's Drag Race. And I only started watching it when I was in Melbourne. And um, so, like, and seeing like drag queens dress up and all that sort of thing, it kind of, um, put something in my mind about like performance art and that sense of dressing up and all that sort of thing so if I ever did wear these out I feel like it would um I'd like do drag or something with it like actually like dress up as opposed to just like walking down the street like they're not like they're not like real they're not like fashion things they're not like wear like that's the thing like it's not a commercial endeavour that I'm like I'm making these hats and people can buy them and wear them out and stuff like that like it's all relative to my practice and stuff like that. But yeah, if I ever did wear them out, I probably would just do the drag. How long does it take you to make one? Um, or depends. Big one, oh, it also depends on like, if I'm, if, like, ones that I know, how, how to make it. Like, the thing is, when I make these sorts of things, I literally commit like full days doing it. Like, it's so funny, like, I saw some people come in my photo today and they're like, oh my god, you have like so much time on your hands or whatever, like, but, but like, I, it's because I can make draw these things because I literally just sit in my room for like 12 hours and just like make sure like I like look at the clock and I'm like okay I have to do this in like 3 hours and then I'll just make sure I like do it quick and like mash it out like that apple thing um, I made for my friend Alice she had a book launch the other night and like I didn't have I was like okay I'm going to wear like make an apple hat for it because it's like it was like the A to Z of food or something so A was apple so I was like okay I'll make um an apple hat and so I literally like spent the whole day here like making that apple hat just for that night and like everybody loved it and stuff but like it's like I have to it really depends and it depends on how much time I commit because it's so like, hard if you're like working all the time that like in your spare time you kind of don't want to just be like wasting and making a crochet hat but <laughs> <laughs> sorry where'd you keep them all? oh so they just like hang around in a house um, <laughs> like Taj is here she, like she would she would um be a good testament to live like they're literally just like laying around a house like I, like these ones here they li- they're in this that suitcase and I've just been leaving them here one because it's convenient to have some here and also because they, they take up so much room like like I, like well, I've like around like twenty something now and they yeah they literally just lay around my room and they keep and I keep making bigger ones and bigger and bigger so like yeah they're just laying around um, collecting stuff. So do you carry on doing food? I mean, when will you move on? Will you, food, do you think there's enough food to keep you going for it? Oh, well, like, the thing with the food thing is, it's like, um, that's kind of the point of which I went viral. So, like, that's why I just keep doing it. So, um, it's obviously a popular thing and everybody has their own, like, well, one food is, like, um, also really relatable to everybody, but also, like, um, I think... If I keep doing food, like, everybody can relate to it. Like, I did this thing. It's a screw. Everybody asks if it's a mushroom, if it's this and that. Like, but um, it's not necessarily because um, it's not identifiable as a screw, but it's just what I'm known for doing now. And um, so, yeah. Do you find inspiration from emojis? Yeah, well, my friend keeps saying, do you just keep looking at emojis and stuff like that? Sometimes I do, because at least with emojis, they're like a popular thing that everybody has reference to. So, um, yeah, and because they are like little graphic symbols, like that's how I approach my photos in that, uh, like, um, I, it has to be somewhat identifiable as like a big image, but also as like a thumbnail on Instagram. So I know that if people like it and they go on that tab, they can see it and they can click on it and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, emojis are definitely up there. What's that? Yeah. Well, that was just the first ever, that was like the first like face <coughs> thing I made. That was like my first post on Instagram. But um, that's just like the little thing I put on my head. <laughs> um, and then people around it, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, 
Structurally, where does the structure come into it in terms of the bigger you get, obviously, it just talk them? Is that sort of you're working it out as you go or yeah. like that? Yeah, well, that one's... You kind of figure that out before you start it? Yeah, well, at least with that source one, um, that's like a coat hanger and I entered it. <laughs> And that was like balancing on my head, so that's not a book that's very not practical. I like, took out the wire afterwards, I was like, I have to remake it. But um, when I like when I first started, um, I kind of did make that one little base thingy and then build up around it. And I guess as I've gone along, I've kind of experimented with making them smaller or um, whatever. But when it comes to making big things, I've like I had a real um, aversion to trying to sew different shapes together to make them bigger. But recently I've realised that's like the easiest and fastest way to go around making things these days because like it's easy to make a whole bunch of small objects than like like crocheting into a giant sausage, like that's what I used to do and that like took so long, like like physically holding this and then like doing rows on this. Um, but yeah, I just kinda of draw it as I go. Um, and they're all filled with um, like polyfill or like they've just been buying pillows. Because they're cheap. Then, like, if I don't, can't be bothered going to Spotlight, I just go to Big W down the road. There's about like $5 pillows. It's easy. Do you have any that you don't post or that are like actually failures that you can't fix? There are a few that I've kind of made and then I haven't posted them. Um, the thing is, it's like the way I approach, the way I work is um, I kind of just. Um, like, if I have an idea in my head, it's like, I don't sketch and I don't plan, I just make. So, um, so, and then I always make everything with the intention of putting on Instagram, so, um, that's why sometimes I just, like, don't have anything to post for weeks because I just don't, just didn't make anything. Um, but yeah, no, it's just kind of like, I just make them as I go, so there's really nothing that you haven't seen that I haven't, that I've made, um, because, yeah. Literally, I will finish something and then I'll sit in our drip take photos of it, like, and then it's on Instagram, and then that's done. That, that's a finished thing. <laughs> but, but yeah. Do you have a lot of people approaching me to buy them, or for you to make ones for <laughs> <laughs> between your shoots and things? Yes, yeah, all the time. Um, yeah, no, like, I don't mind um, doing shoots and I don't mind doing anything that's created for myself as well, like, collaborations, like, I'd love to do more. Um, but people wanting to buy them, I don't know because I make these in my spare time and obviously, like I said before, I have, didn't really make them with the intention of making them into a commercial endeavour. So, um, have, like, knowing that, like, I've spent all this time making this thing and then just some random has them and, like, I don't even know them and, like, <laughs> like, I don't get any, like, emotional work out of just getting money for these sorts of things. Like, I'd rather, like, make meet people. Like, you know, like, I'd rather make friends with everyone than, like, be this really rich person because I've, like, sold all these hats and then everybody buys them for the novelty of it. Like, but I did realise the other day that, like, if I was ever going to sell them, I'd make them for kids. Like, I wouldn't make them for, like, adults or anything. I'd make them for, like, kids or... People who don't actually realise what they are outside of just being this, like, food hat type thing. Um, what about selling patterns? Do you, oh, well, I mean, Do you feel the same way, or...? I don't know because I kind of make them on the fly as well so that's not because like I literally just know the one way of making everything and so I just make them just like mm -hmm. and then it's a dumb thing and like when I get asked about patterns I wouldn't even be able to read a pattern so yeah like be able to sell them but like I don't mind if people make try and like emulate them or make them themselves um but I think it's just more of the me actually giving away things that I've done myself um that's the thing that's a little bit well, I'm just like precious with them, really. I find it quite hard to crochet without a pattern. I'm kind of the opposite. <laughs> and recently I made something without a pattern and kind of went by the fly. I was really proud of myself. But I'm really interested in you saying your technique is very much by the fly. How did you actually learn then? How did you, um, how uh, did you create a shape if you... Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, how did I, I teach myself to do all this? I love pattern and I don't understand it. And I'll follow it and at the end I've got a shape. I'm like, wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way you do it really intrigues me and I'm really keen to tell people about it. Um, well, I taught myself on, from YouTube. So did I, yeah. yeah. Which was really hard, like, yeah. it was so hard, like, they just, like, move so fast and, like, because they're not physically there, you can't, like, do it with them. But, um, I don't even know how I, like, 
figured out how to do. I guess it's kind of like um, you just have to kind of like break it down mentally. Like you're literally just making like going around the circles to make a shape. If you know how to make this one small chain and how to make that chain to the other chain, you can just make any shape you want really, as long as you know how to like. You can go backwards and forwards, do 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 do, and then that makes a square. Go around it, and then you're just making like a square based long thing or like. Um, as long as something has a hole, you can make a hole into something, you can crochet into it. Like at uni, um, I used to just like crochet random stuff or crochet into things or like cut up like things and crochet into them. Like it's really just experimenting with um, being able to play with like um, crocheting into things, I think. But also um, just making, just like going and just making whatever. Like I used to just make like weird like things and like, all that sort of stuff. And then you, then you can like rein it in and then you can just like make something more refined, I guess. That's, that's the thing. That's how I approach like any sort of art, like do whatever and then like bring it back. So you're still studying now? I have one unit there. Yeah. And did that tie in with any of this or was that quite separate or? What I did at uni? Yeah. Um, oh, so I did like stuff at uni that was crochet and like you have your majors and your minors. So um, in my major I did like conceptual, like blah, blah, blah. Um, and then my minor, I did lots of like, I can't know it all, I can't really show you from the photo, but like, um, I did just like made these like big giant blobs. Yeah. Um, and like, like they were all multicolored, and they, but they were also really big as well. But I think um, that's like the only connection from uni to this sort of stuff. I just kind of made those as like tests, I guess. But that's what I guess that's you know, just saying it now, that's how I um, learned how to make so that's like a fine arts. Course. Yeah, but yeah. So I studied fine arts at Curtin. Um, so I had, I had one elective left, but I moved over to Melbourne before I could finish it. So um, I didn't really have any opportunity to finish it. It's just deciding on what, when, and where I want to do it. Yeah. So I have all the sub forms signed and stuff. It's just getting the other person is coordinates the unit to sign it. So it's right for me to do it. So do you have a routine when you're making these? Like you need like a cup of tea or like you've got some tally or your music on? Uh, how long you go about it? Or is this totally random? It's just like whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's not really a process. Like I like literally wake up and then do it. Like maybe I'll have, actually no. Like the best thing about um, about for me is like, I, well originally I started making um, like the this, like hot one and um, the burger one. Um, because it's a way to like let out any like anxieties and stuff like that. Um, but like now I can just like have coffee and then like you just get have like the shapes and stuff and you just like that's how that's how I can do it throughout a whole day because um, I guess like my metabolism works really fast so like straight away I'm just like <laughs> and just like have a few coffees in a day and then like hopefully have it done by the afternoon. But um, do you ever want to like eat them because you're getting hungry? That's all food related. Yeah, like sometimes, sometimes I like think of the food and then I want to eat it. Like, just like stuff in your head. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, I guess like I went like I work at a burger place as well, so I like always eat burgers and stuff like that. Um, so are you listening to music or TV or having friends around, or are you just in your room, door shut? And um, I don't know, Tash. What do I do? <laughs> He just watches YouTube videos or <laughs> yeah, like that was Drag Race on. Yeah, like yeah. it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so you can do it with. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can do it with sounds. I can do it with no sound. Like sometimes the thing with having sounds is that um, it gives you a weird track of time going past. So if you literally watch a few episodes of a show and they're like forty minutes long and you've only made this much of one thing, you know you've done like hours worth of something yeah. but if you're sitting there in silence and doing something and you keep checking your watch or your clock or whatever and um, you've done this amount of things and you see only five minutes have gone past it's probably better to just sit in mm-hmm. silence because then you just it's kind of like when you wake up in the morning and you watch TV and then like next thing you know you meant to have gone like ten minutes ago but it's because you was just watching TV for like two seconds and you're like time's gone past already um, but yeah do you have a huge stash of yarn or are you going to make a drumstick you need a lot of that orange colour don't you yeah, um, well, I kind of, uh, before I used to buy not enough, I like to go to the shops and just buy certain colours, um, and then, um, 
Like, but then I had to keep going backwards and forwards and like I'd never have enough or they'd sell out or la la la. So yeah, so I've like so much yarn. Um, the funny thing is I used to always do like three strands of the same colour that would make it thick enough for me to use the, my needles to make them big enough. Um, and then like coming here because all, all the yarn is so like thin, I have to use like 12 strands in one <laughs> giant thing. But um, so yeah, like yeah, I have heaps of yarn and I use lots of yarn. Um, I just, the thing is, is that they're like all the similar colours, so they're all like yellow and red and stuff, so like, um, yeah, a lot of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I go by colours, so um, as opposed to, yeah, acrylic, like any ply, um, yeah, wool, whatever, like I don't really mind as long as I have, it's the right colour, I don't mind. So what size what do you use? Seven. And it's the only one I really use for all of them. I haven't really strayed from it. Do you like all of these foods? Yeah, yes, yes. Could you make anything that you didn't like? Ah, uh, well the only like food thing that I wouldn't like, like is coriander. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an obscure thing to like make, it's like a leaf. <laughs> and I, even then I'd have to eat it anyway, like as if I'd like not eat it. Um, but yeah, no, I like food enough that it's not like completely out of this. How have you found the residency here at the workshop? Has that affected the work in any way? Or um, apart from more? <laughs> no, no, it's actually been great. Like, I think <laughs> it's like. Like, so when I asked for, um, when I started, when I um, found out I was going to be doing my residency, I was set to work that I'd only do nights instead of days. Um, and I used to do like full days, like every day. Um, so I'm only doing like three and a half hour nights. But um, the annoying thing is because I'm working so much less, it means I have less money, which means leaving the house sound, seem like this weird, like money wasting thing <laughs> to like. So like, if I come here, it's like, I have to commit like the full day, or if not, like I can't come in for a few minutes because like I can't like use my mic key and it's like you have no money or like I don't know. Um, but it's, this is like a great environment, hey, like it's like quiet and everybody's nice. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's the thing is, it's like I've come at a time where everybody's been asking me to do other things as well, like commission me things. And so it's kind of made me less able to um, be just like freely creative because everybody keeps asking me to make specific things. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that's a bit over in the next few weeks. But um, yeah, like like um, like that I would have made that up anyway. But yeah, it's it's just been a combination of all these things at once. It's made like it's not like I just like. Who else commissions, if you're allowed to talk about it? Oh, yeah. Like, commission stuff on you. Well, like, um, so, so, um, mainly food things. So, I met up with this girl who's, like, marketing for sort of, like, Kong. Like, the Kong baby, like, that whole group of things. So, I'm making something for them. Um, and then, also, I had an interview the other day with SBS Food. Oh. Um, so, they want me to make something for them to do a giveaway. So, like, just, like, all those little small things, um, and, like, obviously now I have a, a lot of press things now that people kind of want things to be exclusive to them. So if they give me enough time, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can just make, like, one thing for you, so then you have, like, some sort of point of difference. Mm -hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's just all those sorts of little things, like, mainly food things as well, I'm becoming, like, a food person, <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne food person. Do you have, um, like, you had such a strong idea about why you set this up and what you wanted to achieve from it. Do you have an idea about where you want to take it or if you want to take it somewhere or what you want to do? <coughs> you know, is there own this? It's kind of, yeah, it's like interesting because it's like something that everyone's been asking me lately. Yeah. Um, especially now, like, I think I've, I got really lucky and I have, have like, a str uh, strong, like, press space now and a lot of, a lot of public publicity and a strong following after only having my Instagram since August or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just like, I don't know what I should be doing with it or if I should just take it as it comes. Because things do seem to just come to me anyway. But whether or not I want to be proactive about something specifically, like, 
I guess at the end of the day, like my goals with doing everything on by social media is like to just be like a famous like art artist, famous artist. Like in like a contemporary reference of an artist, because people I guess people these days are really very artists outside of like people who are dead. Yeah. But like, you know, like 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 general people off the street, like they would not know who any contemporary artist I guess are. So I guess that that's, that in my mind is like you know, you just have like a really high goal yeah. that you just like slowly go towards. But um, I guess it's really hard to kind of think about things because like it hasn't even been years since I started my Instagram. So like knowing what my end goal is, like eight months or whatever it's been, yeah, um, it's a bit daunting. But yeah, I, I, I'll just make friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you started, also, someone also your question. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I will give it back. Oh, yeah. um, when you started your Instagram, did you have this idea of what it would find when like you created sort of artistic piece, or did you just start it for not knowing that what could come out of it? Yeah, like um, like something that everyone bring, brings up um is like how like my Instagram is like this curated um thing, and it's like I, I guess that's like what I just wanted to do with it, like as a pro- as opposed to like approaching putting things on social media is kind of like, um, oh, this is my life, like, <laughs> no. like, um, I wanted to have some sort of reference for my work because growing, um, coming out of uni, I didn't really do anything while I was at uni, so I didn't have any exhibitions and I didn't have any of those sorts of things, so I was like, okay, well, I have to make some things, um, so people can look at it, um, and it has to be well, like, presented and all that sort of thing, like, I've taken notes, like, I always wear grey shirts now, like, all those sorts of things, um, I, I, I knew it had the potential of being something, but I didn't expect the turnaround to be so quick, um, which, it was, <laughs> crazy. Um, yeah, yeah you there. I guess, like, I'm trying to figure out the whole Instagram as a tool thing at the moment as well. So I was wondering if, yeah, you could, you just kind of did a little bit, but if you could, yeah, elaborate on how, like, why you think your Instagram is so successful. Um, I think, like, there's so many things with social media, like, they're just, like, universally popular things, and, um, I feel like with my Instagram, I, I tick a lot of, like, niche boxes with a lot of things, so, like, um, like, I'm, like, like, I make these food hats, I take photos of them, like, everybody comments on my face, so I guess that's a thing, like, if it's funny, like, it's funny, like, it, like, I guess, I like, guess I'm so nice, serious about it, but everybody else takes joy out of it, so I guess that's, like, why, in, in that sense, it's appealing, um, like, um, they're, they're relatable objects, they're, like, visual, they're strongly visual things, they're not, like, um, paintings that they're just, like, shh and expressive or whatever, um, and also because they're physical objects, I think that's the thing. Like people want to buy them, they want to touch them, all those sorts of things, because they are these physical things that they can see me wearing as well. So they, it has some sort of sense of like it's it's real, um, as opposed to like a two D image or two like two dimensional art, where if you take a photo of it and put it through something digital, it's just flat. It's just like an image, like um, as opposed to these sorts of things, people can relate to something being worn. They can they can have some sort of sense of like, well, wow, that's big, or like all those sorts of things, um, and also I guess it's some kind of somewhat unexpected that I'm a guy, or a young guy, doing these sorts of things as well, um, and yeah, so it's a combination of all those sorts of things, yeah. and that's, you just, like, it's just like, I think I have a few points of difference between, like, I don't know who, but, like, that makes my Instagram more successful. So did you, um, did you do the whole thing where you used to spend, I've heard of people spending, like, when they first start out, spending sort of hours a day on Instagram, you know, doing all the liking and commenting and stuff, to sort of try and get followers. So did you do that kind of thing at all, or did you just kind of let it happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because, because like, that, and that's the thing, and I think that's why I keep um, maintaining that it is, it is like a frame-making tool, because that's kind of what I set out to do in the first place anyway. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how, like, you just go on the explore thing, it's like, people you like little things like people you, who you follow or whatever, like based on people you follow, all those sorts of things. Um, but yes, yeah, like it's kind of one of those things where you have to kind of get engaged with the thing that you're doing um, in order to have that sort of response. Because I guess if you're just literally just posting things on Instagram, unless you're, you yourself are also engaging with other people's work, um, you can't, they can't see your work in the first place. Like, 
at some point, like, I just stopped using hashtags. But, like, even, like, using hashtags, like, even going on ha other hashtags or all that sort of thing, like, you really have to get engaged with it in order for other people to see you because it's not just all going to come to you. Because, like, yeah, I used to always go on, like, the hashtags. I used to just, like, on the Explore tab, which I still do now. Um, like, you just like other people's photos and comments and all that sort of thing. Like, you just have to get engaged with them. Mm -hmm. That's what's actually...